The Coal Commission was established in 2018. At that time, the whole climate debate was very heated. It was clear that renewable energies had to be expanded, but it was also clear that coal-fired power generation had to be phased out in order to achieve this. At that time, the environmental movements were arguing with the trade unions and the business community about the feasibility of all these phase-out considerations. And for that, it was important to get everyone around the table to negotiate with each other. At that time, Germany had committed to climate protection and had developed ambitious goals. It was clear that renewable energies had to be expanded and coal-fired generation had to be cut back. And this was the point where government was looking for advice on implementation. My name is Barbara Pretorius. I'm a professor at the University of Applied Sciences in Berlin and a climate economist. I was appointed as one of the four chairs of the Commission to shape the compromise process and reconcile the different interests. My goal would have been that we agree to phase out coal by 2030. I still think this is technically feasible and economically justifiable. The Coal Commission was set up by the federal government, the Ministry for Economic Affairs, the Ministry of the Environment and other ministries were involved. Accordingly, there were proposals from all sides in order to get the broadest possible range of stakeholders on board. This is reflected in the composition of the Commission. We have representatives from the trade unions, from the economy, from science and from the region including those directly affected and those concerned about loss of revenue. The point was that we were in a major social conflict. It was clear that coal-fired power generation had to be reduced. On the other hand, there were serious interests on the part of the regions and also the operators of these power plants. A decision could not simply be made by the federal government. The idea was to get all the players around the table to discuss it. The federal government expected recommendations from the Commission and has set us clear milestones. How can we succeed in phasing out coal-fired power generation? How can we reduce CO2 emissions by 2020 and 2030, respectively? And then, finally, we were tasked with naming a year by which it is feasible to have phased out coal-fired power generation. There were no restrictions or prohibitions on the Commission's thinking. The only requirement was that we look at a broad range of different justified interests and try to find a compromise, a solution that is acceptable to all. The biggest conflict in the discussions was the mediation between the environmental forces and the regions. The regions were worried that they would become dead land if neither coal nor coal-fired power generation nor any other economic activity still existed. Solutions had to be found, and that was one of the biggest challenges. We were given clear climate protection targets by the federal government and had to set out in the report how we intended to achieve them. We had to specify how many coal-fired power plants would have to be shut down by 2030 in order to achieve a certain reduction target. We had long arguments over the cut-off sequence. Forces emerged that wanted to keep the power plants on the grid much longer than is compatible with climate protection. The working process in the Commission was varied. 
We tried to learn a lot from each other, and I think we succeeded. We argued a lot, also about fundamental issues. Gestritten und auch über grundsätzliche Fragestellungen sicherlich viel gestritten. Wir haben aus diesem Grund auch immer wieder. For this reason, we repeatedly set up working groups in order to find consensus in a smaller format. Besprechen zu können und auch gemeinsame Linien und Konsenslinien finden zu können, Kompromisse. Our biggest problem in working together was that we did not only have discussions among the 28 members of the Commission. A large circle of stakeholders besieged us the whole time, trying to contribute their questions. That's why it was so important that we managed to negotiate behind closed doors and that not everything immediately made its way into the press. Work based on trust is possible in a small group, but you can't do it in a big group. I think that the Commission was a focal point for a lot of pre-existing underlying conflicts. This was shown by the fact that in the morning the trade unions demonstrated and two hours later Fridays for Future were in front of the Commission's meeting rooms. We had considerable conflicts during the last night of negotiations. It was on a knife edge whether we would reach an agreement. This showed that there had certainly been earlier points where compromises had been postponed, that a solution was finally reached after our long last night is mostly due to the will of all those involved to negotiate. I assume that most went into this commission willing to find a solution. This also had to do with the fact that this conflict and the truth of the climate problem were so serious that it was clear to everyone that solutions had to be found now. The alternative would probably have been more radical regulations that would have restricted possibilities for compromise, remuneration, compensation, etc. In my opinion, the most important result is the clear, formulated phase-out sequence for power plants and the clear commitment that renewable energies must be expanded to compensate for this. This is already reflected in government policy today and leads to enormous drive in this area. It's just as important that we have succeeded in resolving the social conflict in Lusatia and the Rhineland by taking economic and structural policy measures there. Some progress has already been made in these areas. You can see that people are willing to reconcile climate and structural policy. In the Commission, everyone has to back down. Everyone has to bite the bullet in one way or another. And I think this is the art of compromise at this point. I think the round table model is a very good model. It creates a place to really work, to talk to each other, to exchange ideas, and not just to argue briefly once or to outline one's interests in a position paper. In this respect, I would say that round tables are a good approach for other countries to explore what is socially possible. I think the task we completed back then is so important, and I would do it again in a heartbeat. Thank you.